You should have seen it before you jumped on in And realized that if you look before you leap Then you decide to sink or swim But you dove into that social pool Powdering your nose, huh? And going home with people that you hardly even know And you're a ghost Now look at you, you hardly even speak Chris, we're still the noise And we're here with uh, Greed and Budo at the Troubadour And yes, sir. Uh, West Hollywood How you guys doing today? Doing great, man, how you doing? Good, good, good Right on um, So, sold out show? Yeah Yeah, this is our first sellout And uh, this is our first sellout in L.A., I think yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, we sold out the small room at the Knitting Factory. Oh, that's true. Well, that was like 90 people. Yeah, yeah, it was a that's tiny, tiny, the old Knitting Factory yeah. up on Hollywood Rest Boulevard. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, this is, uh, this is really awesome. It's, it's kind of amazing to see the people turning out in, you know, Los Angeles. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Nice, yeah. nice. It's a blessing. Um, you guys have been on tour for a couple weeks now, three weeks, four weeks? Yeah, I think about a yeah, month, about maybe. about three to four weeks yeah, yeah. right okay. now. Uh, right before that, we did a uh, Vans Warped Tour, mm-hmm. which was... What, seven Forever? Se- it was something forever. like forever. Long as shit. <laughs> something like <laughs> never <laughs> fucking That's the actual, yeah. a metric ass ton of days. Yeah, yeah. 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 And how was that? How was being on the bands of work for? It was everything. It was yeah. incredibly overwhelming. It was intense. It was amazing, rewarding, heartbreaking. Like, it was, it was an incredible experience. It was just, uh, you know, you throw 70 bands and 110 buses and 30 semi-trucks and... 44 shows or 47 days and, and you've got uh, tear across America yeah you've got, <laughs> you've, you've got some shit you've got a real carbon footprint um, nice nice no it was it was amazing for us to get in front of an audience you know I mean you don't think of hip hop necessarily when you think of the warp Tour and so it was a really unique opportunity for us to get in front of an audience of people that we would never ever get in front of before or, or otherwise you know and um, yeah we gotta reach kids that if you would've walked up to them in any other environment and been like you wanna hear some hip hop they'd be yeah, like fuck, fuck yourself yeah. Well, you know, you guys are the first uh, non-electronic uh, band that's going to be on our, our group. Oh, dope. That's well, going to be on you. our website. So. We're yeah. down with Big Chocolate, though, so, like, that's cool. <laughs> you know, we're down with Big Chocolate and with Daft Punk. Yes. Daft yes. Punk, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so what was one thing on the Warped Tour that stood out, like, that, that's just going to be in your in your memory forever? Man. Bad Rabbits. Uh-huh. This band, Bad Rabbits, like, one... I found out about them uh, before we went on tour because they were announced when we were, and and uh, we were thinking about sharing a bus together. And I started listening to their music, and I was like, I love this shit. And I kind of like fanboyed out on them like the first week, and was like following them around Warp Tour, like trying to meet them and shit. And I, I ended up we ended up becoming really good friends with yeah, those guys, yeah, and, and uh, I absolutely adore their music it's it's fantastic it's like this new jack swing soul funk music that just nice. nobody's making anymore nice. like you can look up on this wall and probably see some people that made music like that but no one's doing what they're doing now and okay. i i absolutely love it and i wouldn't have found out about them as early as i did if it wasn't for the band's well and what was the name of the band again bad rabbit bad bad Rabbit. okay we'll definitely have to check them yeah, out they're so sick so how does it feel to play at the troubadour i mean look at you like you said look at the people on the wall jackson I mean, brown staring at me Richard i'm gonna put Pryor a picture of myself up there before i leave i'm just gonna like draw Guns a picture of myself on a sticky note and now, there's there's venues across the country like this, and there aren't that many of them, but ones that just feel like they have like a like a soul to them, you know. Yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you walk in, and you just you 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 kind of feel that, you know, like places like you know the First Avenue in in, uh, in Minneapolis where they film Purple Rain. You know? He rode a motorcycle through that club uh-huh. in that movie. Yeah, and yeah. I've been on that stage. Been on that fucking <laughs> stage. That's you know? that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, man, where else? other venues that, that kind of have that, that feel. I mean we played a cut like Red Rocks and, and okay. uh, the Greek Theater in, in uh, up in yeah, Berkeley that was okay. sick um, and that the Gorge insane. the Gorge out, that's out of oh. Seattle you know but those are those are unique for different reasons those are just physically beautiful yeah. you know like this one is physically like a like a hunting a yeah hunting it's like lodge, an Elks Lodge you know like in here. this is not Red Rocks but it's special you know yeah. and, and yeah. that's cool so so it's it's like it's like awesome. It's like it's kind of the shit to be here. And, and nice, yeah. nice. Um, where do you guys get your your inspiration from? Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> I think just I don't know, man. Like things happen. You know, mm-hmm. we're all human, and just things happen. And mm-hmm. I think that's what some people deal with it in different ways, and and especially for me, like as a writer, I just that's the way that I deal with it. That's the way that I cope with it. Mm-hmm. And he was really good at catering to my crazy with his music, so. I think a lot of it just kind of comes from that. Just kind of in the places that we fall into as yeah. as humans and as artists and as people. Nice. So. Nice. Now I know that you've 
I did some research, and you grew up partly in Chicago yeah. and then in, in Colorado, correct? Yes, sir. Um, seems like you had some some struggles growing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I got a little rough for I had a rough patch as a kid, but yeah. so did everybody. It feels yeah. like. It's just, do you, what do you think? You what what did you bring from from that to your music? Um, I think the fact that I realized that projection is a lot. You know, and and it helps me get out a lot of that stuff, and that's what a lot of the, my music is, and that's what got me out of that stuff was just kind of believing and and understanding that things can be different, and just kind of engaging in a, like a forward motion with all that stuff, okay. and and I think it reflects itself greatly in my music. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. I mean, um, like I said, I'm not the biggest hip hop fan, yeah. but I sat down, I listened to your music, and uh, I believe it was Lightspeed. I was listening. To yeah. That. I was listening to that and I, and I was like, it made a lot of sense to me because yeah. time flies. It really does, you man. Know? And when, when when we're young, we don't realize that. Yeah. yeah. You know, but that's part of being young, you know. It's like it's not because if you're if you're 12 and you're sitting down and thinking about how quickly you're gonna turn 13 and you're not gonna be 12, you're just gonna be old. in limbo. You know, like I'm gonna have to take take that one. I'm gonna have yeah. to take that yeah. one. I'm not gonna. Yeah, that's right. I just turned 30. <laughs> this 30 year old and man. he can take whoever he wants <laughs> yeah. because yeah. what are you gonna do about it? Nothing. He will fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can game. have that. <laughs> so, um, what do you guys? Um, you guys are going to be done with the tour at the end of the month. October October thirtieth. Yeah. We drive home. Okay. From and Victoria, British Columbia. Yeah. And then we go home for four or five days, and then we hop on a plane to go to Europe, and uh, we're doing three weeks with Atmosphere and Evidence and Brother Ali and Blueprint. Uh, How, and how's that? It's going to be badass. Well, I think it's going to be pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're throwing all of us on a giant rap bus and traveling across uh, Europe. So it's gonna it's be like, gonna melt Europe's face like off. The real, much. the real world Rhymesayers edition. It's and it's be. sponsored by Carhartt, so yeah. we get all the, we get like team jackets yeah, yeah, and shit. It. It's yeah. gonna be badass. Yeah, you guys have to send some pictures over. Yeah, we, we will. Show up. That'd we be great. Will. We'll yeah. send us some updates. Send yeah, your postcard, we'll check in with you Send your postcard from Paris. So. Yeah. I told him I'm to Paris, my, motherfucker. My name tag is Mr. President on my. Uh, on, I told him to put Stalin on mine. Oh, it's too soon. So I have a couple questions. Um, <laughs> um, Sorry. Um, Richard uh, Jessica from San Diego wants to know, um, what's your favorite song to perform live? I Eat Your Soul is really yeah, fun for cool. me because it's an old song and it's just, it's crazy to me to see how far it's traveled and, and like when that first note hits everybody knows what song it is and it's just it, it sets the room on fire and it's amazing and it's definitely not what I thought it was going to be when I sat down to record that song like it's cool for me it makes something that I've done a million times and, and like has been around for night. ages yeah. it makes it fresh for me it's, it's a cool feeling nice nice well, I'll, I'll have all the oh. study and then I'll go let me get that you're going to have to blur that out Maybe Friskies would be like a good sponsor. This good is sponsor. pate. So you guys are gonna sit down outside and just eat that can of. Uh, oh, I ain't eating the cat food. No, uh, he's, he's got his own challenge yeah, set yeah. set up. Yeah, I um, bought this uh, milkfish up in Canada, which is apparently like a delicacy, but it's soaked in tomato sauce. And if DJ Fundo, who is Prof's DJ, is one of our opening acts, uh, if he can run for five minutes, five minutes straight, and at like a uh, six miles like, an hour, something heartedly slow basically a walk basically if he can walk for five minutes straight then i will eat the milkfish and i am confident that he's probably not going to be able to walk for five minutes straight so i think i'm going to get, get but he all, he loses he loses because if he doesn't do it then he has to yeah, be winded and eat shit. that shitty yeah. stuff so that's and prof and i just decided that we're just going to do this we're not it's not even a wager it's just we're going to sit down out yeah, there there's and no eat this yeah, cat it's, food. It's, it's a gentleman's gentleman's thing wow because we acquired this for free and we don't want it to go to waste, especially so, after our interview with PETA. It's true. What if my, so, one of my camera guys would sit down and eat some of that with you, with you guys? If, if to, <laughs> to address girl from San Diego's question, our influence is fish, poultry byproducts, water sufficient for processing, meat byproducts, liver, rice, and shrimp. So if you had to pinpoint one set of influences for the music that we make, I would list those ingredients and probably say that's Seafood it. Seafood supreme. You actually don't want to read that. You're going to eat that. Yeah, like, this yeah. is from Canada, too. So, Hey, there's good things come from Canada. I think they're, the women are crazy, but, you know. They're all crazy, but their dietary restrictions are, like, uh, they're probably safer up there. I don't know. Their health care system's good. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. What Socialism. 
Hey, good health care, though. Exactly. Yeah. I wish I could go up there sometimes. Um, now, you guys are on Rhyme Sayers? Yeah. Yes, sir. How's that? How was that? It's a dream come true. I grew up listening to all those guys on that label. And, like, Brother Ali is, like, my favorite rapper. And I get to hang out with him now. It's badass. It's uh, when your idols become your peers and your friends. You know, it's just, it's a really cool feeling. And it, it goes beyond success for me. It's just, like, you can't really beat that. Okay. That's really cool. All right. Um, if there's anything you could tell somebody that wanted to get into the business, what would you tell them? Make sure Advice. you love making music for the sake of making music. Um, and make your music. You yeah. know? Don't make my music. Don't make somebody else's music. Like, make your music. Like, yeah. figure out what m- makes you want to sing, what makes you want to touch those keys, like, and play Find that. Find your cat food. Find your cat <laughs> food. Yeah. Uh, Find your friskies. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know... You could sit down and make all the right business moves and have all the money in the world and you know have the best image and, and everything and, and and if you're not making something from a genuine place of like from a genuine place then you're not you know people will people will know and you'll know and, and it's not, it's not worth it you could you could there are a lot better things to be doing with money and and uh, and you know sort of thoughtful business plans and shit like there there's way more money to be made in other in other businesses you know with with that sort of backing behind you i think yeah. like do this because you love it and because yeah. you have we all have something to express you know and, and if music is your is your lens and your filter then, then do that you know but but genuinely do that yeah. and that's one thing i could tell about you guys in music you know is like when i listened to it it wasn't like i said it came it comes from the heart i yeah. can tell you know and you know i've listened been listening to some musicians for years and you know your music actually like I related to a lot better than a lot more than some of the, my you know favorite bands cool you know, man so you know growing up rough is definitely you know it's an paying adventure. off a little bit yeah, yeah you know it's, it can be a gift from gift from yeah. you know whoever you know yeah. so alright we uh we're good we're good cool. well thank so, you so much man. no okay. thank you and uh I'm excited to see this cat food venture. Yeah, we got one more interview and then we're gonna we're gonna cat get our food. waiter, DJ Fundo. You guys gonna film the cat food? Yeah. Just totally yeah. film the cat food. Oh yeah. What's that? What's that?